All right, so in this video, we're checking out some updated Express LRS parts from Nemino RC. So this is the new, I guess they're not really calling a V2, but the, uh, essentially is a V2 of the, um, this is the flash transmitter, the flash TX, 2.4 gigahertz module. This is obviously the micro module, not the uh, nano sized. So I did a video a while back on these black version ones. And um, this one here is also the 2.4 gigahertz micro module. Um, they, I think um, we're making a 900 megahertz black V1 as well back then. I'm not sure if I showed in that video or not, um, but it doesn't look like they have a gray V2 and 900 megahertz yet, as far as I know. And this part does seem to be fairly um, hard to get. It's they did have some stock at Pyrojone and a few other places, but it's quickly going out of stock and I don't know the reasons why that is. Now, the reason they went from this um, V1 to the V2, other than obviously the screen, which I'll talk about here shortly, is because of the chip shortage. Um, the V1 here was based on the, uh, at least for the uh, MCU, the, basically the processing unit was based on the S STM32 chip, which is um, pretty much impossible to get now or so expensive um, they can't really use it. So they stopped production on these. You can't get these anymore, these V1s. They're pretty, if there's any stock left there, uh, you know, pretty hard to find. As far as I know, it's pretty much all gone. And um, when they switched from the STM32 to the ESP32 chip, which is the more common chip now for Express LRS, they came out with this new model here. And um, all of the ways that they, you update and everything like that, for example, there's no USB port here on the V1, whereas there's one now here on the V2. And to do the update um, via these little pins here, I think you had to get inside here and do the, uh, like something called ST-Link, which is kind of complicated. There obviously was documentation on the expresslrs.org website explaining how to update this model. So if you want to go back to that video or links to the Express LRS website, uh, all the explanations are going to be in that video. I'm not going to cover that again in this video, but I just wanted to explain what the differences are and why it changed and why you can't get this anymore. So now that they have this new V2 model with the updated chip in there, it does have the Wi-Fi capability, which is how I updated this to V2. Now I think it came with some sort of like maybe R RC version of V2 on here already. The button didn't work. The screen works. It just shows you some status information on here, but the button doesn't work. And when I flash it to the latest version of 2.0, it still doesn't work. Uh, I don't know why there's uh, information out there. Some people are telling me that the button works in this one. So that's why I acquired this and it does not. So there's some fake news out there, false information. I don't know why people are saying that. Maybe there's some sort of special firmware I need to flash to this that you can't get through Express LRS configurator. If that's the case, let me know um, and I'll update the video. I did go to the, the nemimnorc.com website where there's no website there. I just get a blank, like a error page. Um, nothing there, no support there. Uh, so I'm not sure where people are saying they can get these firmware files, these mysterious firmware files to get the button to work. Um, I didn't see a pull request either, so maybe yeah, someone could explain to me down in the comments. Let me know how to get this button to work. I know that on the um, beta PV module, you can get their custom forked firmware to get the button to work. And uh, if you just want to get the standard uh, Express LRS 2.0 uh, build, uh, it'll, the OLED screen will work as well, but the button won't work. So you can do the same thing you can do on this Nemino module. It'll, it'll work as well. Of course, this one's only 500 milliwatts, the beta FPV version. This one here does go up to one watt like the the V1. So uh, if you're looking for one watt Express LRS, this one will do that. But I think right now in Banggood, um, you can get the module by itself. Um, and you can get the receiver with the built-in uh, SMD antenna, the ceramic antenna, uh, or the tower antennas as oftentimes referred to as. Now I actually picked up the uh, module plus the three receivers. So there's, there's two of them here and it comes with the standard receiver, which comes with the, um, and basically the dipole antenna and the UFL connector. Um, and also you get the 
wires are included in here as well as some heat shrink, pretty standard stuff here. But yeah, I got the bundle, but that one is out of stock. So the only parts you can get, at least on Banggood, are the module. You can get that, it's like $55 right now. And then the receiver with the tower antenna, not this version. This version is out of stock and I think it's gonna not coming back until like February or something like that. So, but anyway, they did update the receiver as well. As you can see, this is their half size nano receiver. It's similar in size to like the Happy Model EP, EP1, EP2, and it does come with the ESP32 chip and with the Wi-Fi radio in here for updating. And by the way, um, now that this module has the uh, USB-C port, you can update via USB-C. However, I think it needs a different driver and I, and I was not able to get it to work on my computer. And I do have all the standard drivers installed, so I'm not really sure what's up with that. I did um, update mine via Wi-Fi and I just followed the instructions on the ExpressLRS website uh, for this module. So this is the, the new updated module. There's, I think, three different methods of updating this. And I think I used method number two, which is the, basically you um, put this into, like it'll just go into a Wi-Fi hotspot mode and then you connect it to your home network and then uh, ExpressLRS configurator will see it on the network. And then when you do the build and flash, it'll upload it directly to the hotspot here that's created and that's how it will update. So I think that's probably the, going to be your most reliable method if you do it that way. I was not able to get the uh, USB-C method to work. And um, I think there's another way you can get it to tr uh, update via the transmitter, but I heard that some people weren't able to get that to work either. And you're probably wondering, well, wh what's up with the screen here? There is a, a screen sticker right here that you're supposed to put on. I, I actually just didn't bother to put it on. Um, but yeah, that's not installed from the factory. And you do get this uh, Moxon. I think this is a Moxon antenna. And it is SMA, not RPSMA. And as far as I know, all these modules are basically have SMA antennas. That's, that seems to be what everything comes with, even though some people say RPSMA should be the standard. And then you get a standard dipole antenna as well in the box. And then uh, this one comes with this little, I think this is for the QX7 to get the crossfire or the baud rate to, it's a baud rate fix, something like that. So if you need to mod your um, uh, QX7, I think this chip's included in, in the bundle. This is the, the bundle with the module and the three receivers. So the uh, voltage range on the, or the input voltage range on the XT30, I think it's like six to 16 volts. So basically 3S voltage. I'm gonna put a 2S battery in here. So it turns on and you get the screen, but yeah, just to show you the button doesn't work. Obviously you can, uh, if you get the V2 Lewis script on your OpenTX radio, it will work, no problem. But until um, version 2.1 of ExpressLRS comes out, when all the OLED screens and buttons are supported, uh, you won't be able to use this on um, non-OpenTX radio to control the settings here. Uh, so, so if you're looking at this and thinking that you can get this for those non-OpenTX radios, you're gonna to have to wait a little bit until they update to version 2.1. That's gonna be when it's officially supported for this module. Okay, so just uh, take a quick look inside if you wanna see what this looks like. There's a, actually the JR module connector there and then there's a, actually a cable with the connector here and also another connector on the board. There's a bunch of uh, bootloader buttons here. One is for the backpack and the other one is for the main uh, controller unit, the main MCU. So I'm thinking that I might need to probably press one of these bootloader buttons down when I power it on to get the uh, USB-C um, flashing to work. I, yeah, I actually I didn't see that before. Okay, so here is what it looks like on the other side where the heatsink is. So the heatsink, uh, you see the fan there blows on the heatsink and there's some fins there that stick out of the side in the front of the case. That's what you saw earlier. Of course, there's a little plug there for the fan and you see the screen as before, but it looks like the heatsink is glued to the uh, this backside of this board, this PCB, you can see there. I don't see it actually attached to any chips like you would expect. In fact, I think this is the same way BFPV did theirs and I think they were highly criticized for that. You can see the control units here. These are the main chips here that are all the, the chips that control the backpack and the main MCU are on the other side of the board. 
So looks like they did the same thing. I don't, I'm not sure why. I don't, I don't think I, I saw any other videos on this particular module that showed this, but um, interesting that this is yet another second module here that does the same thing with the heatsink on the wrong side, I guess. Or I don't know if that's the right side. Uh, you guys can tell me in the comments below uh, why we're seeing it like this. I suppose that, you know, the heatsinks should be on the side where the chips are, so they're actually directly cooled, but I think I heard, I saw a post from Beta PV that said that, that it doesn't really matter um, that the heat dissipation is adequate, even with the heatsink on the other side. So it probably isn't going to be a problem this one either, even at um, full power at one watt. Uh, but of course, their module is only 500 milliwatts. So I'm, I'll have to see how this actually does at one watt. Um, yeah, maybe I'll have a follow-up video later. Let me know if you're interested in that. Uh, Interesting. Anyway, I think that's going to cover for this video. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below on this module. I know that a lot of people think this is a really nice module. I mean, it looks, um, from a, a build quality and everything, looks very nice. I do wonder about why there's a UFL connector here with nothing on it. I wonder what that's for. This is the main antenna here that the SMA comes out, and then this UFL connects over here. That's for the main transmitter, but I'm thinking that's for the possibly for the Wi-Fi backpack, but uh, with no antenna connected, I'm kind of wondering if that's uh, not a good thing. Uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think about that in the comments below as well. If you guys are still here at the end of the video, okay, that'll do it for this one. Talk to you guys later.